Good afternoon, and welcome to the Union Vocal Music Alumni Chorus Tribute to Camille Elmore. Here at Union, tradition is key to our proud culture of excellence. You see it in the halls as students pass from class to class. You see it in our beautiful facilities. You see it in our highly acclaimed teachers and administrators. You see rich tradition in all our district programs. One program at Union that holds tradition especially close to heart is the vocal music program. For decades, vocal music groups from Union have consistently scored superior at local, state, and national competitions. Groups from this program have been invited to perform in venues all around the world. Individuals from this program have gone on to perform professionally. It is this tradition of excellence that witnessed years ago when Fiddler on the Roof became the first musical performed within these walls. I'd now like to introduce the ambassador of this robust vocal music tradition for 23 years here at Union, Keneal Elmore. Each one of these songs, as I was going through and deciding what to present today, uh, had a special meaning for uh, many of us. And of course, this was the first musical in the PAC. They had been doing musicals. Uh, Mr. Tackett used to have to do them either down in the gym or he had to do them in the cafeteria. And uh, it was quite a production. When we did Fiddler, they were still building when we started working on it. They were still finishing up the auditorium. And we had to have sets prepared to either go to the gym, go to the cafeteria, or be on the stage. And literally two weeks before the show opened, we convinced the insurance people to come out and approve the auditorium so that we could do it on the stage. 
and we got that approval, and so we did the first musical in this hall, Fiddler on the Roof. We've done it, we did it twice while it was here. Uh, the ne next song is one of my favorites for lots of reasons, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a pretty difficult number. We threw all this together last night. And uh, it's one of my favorites, and I tried to do it about every two or three years. So they've all sung it at some time, most of them. And uh, if they didn't do it here at the high school, they did it in college or a church. And it's Franz, How Lovely Is That Boy.
Now that was quite a feat in one rehearsal. <laughs> That's quite, quite a, a number. The next one uh, is Vivaldi's Gloria, uh, just the Gloria from Vivaldi's Gloria. Um, we did that several times, and I understand even Scott did it uh, this year. And we always did that with our orchestra. You know, it was, it's always, you know, uh, not unusual for schools to have a real fine band program or maybe a real outstanding <coughs> choir program, but we were particularly blessed at Union to have not only an outstanding band, choir, and orchestra. And uh, Pete couldn't be here today, he just had a knee replacement. In fact, I saw a Facebook posting of his surgery this morning. Uh, so he's going to be recuperating, he's recuperating, I think he's still in the hospital. Uh, but we did several concerts, uh, Pete and I together, usually at, uh, at, in, in the December. It got to be politically incorrect to do Christmas programs. <laughs> but, uh, so we decided just to do very wonderful, high-class performances in December. And we did some very, very uh, beautiful works. We did Mozart Mass at City, we did the Vivaldi Glory, we even did one of John Rutter's numbers. And uh, it was always uh, a very classy evening. So we're reviving another kind of tradition that we, this is what tonight is, or today is, it's traditions, memories, and events. And so one of the many events that we did was to do works together. So this represents our concerts. Thank you. 
the next number. It's also pretty difficult too, but I wanted to do this particular number because at this particular time in the program, I'd like to recognize some of our former choir members who have left us. Uh, we've lost a few of our, our students. You know, I feel like a parent who's outlived their children. Every time I hear of one of my kids that I've outlived, that's always a heartbreak. So this is uh, going to be sung in honor of Scott Morris, Neil Hope, Richard Kraft, Sean Mamrie, and Brad Jack. Um, we've lost those particular students. There may be some more. That's the only ones that we could find out about. Um, so this is La Famosa, which is Day of Mourning. And at the end it says, please, the translation loosely translated is, please, dear gentle Jesus, may they rest in peace.
Now this is going to be interesting. I used to could do this very quickly and and not a sound was made. You may hear some moaning and groaning and crunching and grinding. You all may step down one row and sit down.
Ms. Campbell, but I do well to get their maiden names correct. <laughs> and accompanying on this is Candy Coonfield. Candy was uh, in the pit orchestra at that time. She was playing violin, but she asked if she could play because she was part of that West Side Story uh, production. So this is Candy. And Candy, are you still teaching at National Hall? As the choir? She's the choir teacher now at Cash Hall. I love it when they follow in my footsteps. <laughs>
my salt and pepper beard back then. tours actually. The first one took place in April of 1995. Now if you remember April 20th, 1995, we had been invited to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the ending of World War II. And Music Celebrations International used to invite one orchestra, band, choir from each of the 50 states to come throughout the summer and perform patriotic programs in honor of the ending of the war. We were scheduled to leave at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on that day. I came running in. I was wearing a sequined red, white, and blue vest and hat and all ready to go. And the bus was lined up and 110 kids and sponsors ready to go. And that was the morning of the bombing in the Murrow Building in Oklahoma City. Wow. I had some wonderful parents with me who had organized the trip. President uh, Bre Brenda. Larry Meredith, are, I think here, um, who helped organize and raise the money and had some wonderful sponsors. And of course, that was just devastating. I came walking in the office that morning and uh, had been over at the IHI and then came into high school. As I walked in the office, that's all that we saw on the television screen in the office. And <laughs> decisions, decisions, decisions. What are we going to do? And finally, as the day wore on, of course, when we left town, we had no idea whether this was going to break out all over the country, if there would be targets in Washington, D.C. And I got quoted in the paper saying, and I did say it, um, kept asking, parents kept calling, are you going, are you still going? And I said, yes. We've raised $68,000, hard work, and spent months and months and months putting the program together. And if we don't go, the terrorists have defeated us and we live in fear. So we got on the buses and we took off. And if we had to perform on a street corner in Washington, D.C., that's what we were going to do. Well, I can't begin to tell you all the, the amazing things that happened being the Oklahoma kids in Washington that year. Um, all I had to do is get up and say, hi, we're from the great state of Oklahoma, and we got a standing ovation, and we hadn't even sung. And it was just one amazing emotional event after the yeah. other. Well, we were such a hit that then in 1998, 98, we were invited to go back again. This time it was to honor uh, George Washington leaving the presidency and retiring to Mount Vernon. And the Mount Vernon Women's Association with music celebrations invited all these groups again, one from each state, to come all summer and spring. It was really all year. Um, to perform at Mount Vernon and other venues in Washington. So, as we always did, we had a script written, and what we decided to do this time was bring George Washington back 200 years. And so we had a George Washington. Wave at us, Mr. Washington. <laughs> Robert Crawford, I think you were President of Student Council that year? I was our President of Student Council, and we dressed him up as George Washington. And he was part of the script, and we did again another. I love to do blank with the patriotic programs, I get them all the time. And so we had another program that we did. And what was really funny is that everywhere Robert went when we got to Mount Vernon, um, he would say, Well, this is my this is my home, but who are all these strange looking people walking around? Because everybody's in their you know, vacation clothes. But as we then sang our program and then we had time to tour the Mount Vernon. Um, people actually thought he was part of the Mount Vernon staff and they would come up and ask him questions and he made up all kinds of things and just acted like he knew what he was doing. And then uh, the next trip was Boston, what year? Anybody on the Boston trip? Yes, Joab, what year was that? That was uh, 2000. Yeah, I think somewhere around there, 2000. Okay. 
Then we got invited back again. And this time it was the 200th anniversary of the signing of the Constitution. So Boston invited us to come back. And so we, so we made, on three occasions, we made some really wonderful fun trips uh, uh, to all of these places. So we're going to do one of the medleys that we did. And we did this one with a track. Uh, sometimes we had uh, not very good facilities for pianos. When we had them, we used them. And sometimes we used tracks, uh, depending on where we were performing. And so that's where this medley comes from.
Then the, uh, next to the last number. It took me years and years and years to find the alma mater to this institution. Now, at my school, every time there was a gathering of students, we sang the alma mater. And I wondered why there wasn't one at Union. And when I came here, there wasn't one. So I thought, well, there's somewhere in the past history there's been an alma mater. So I started a request, and it took me several years. I called past superintendents. I wrote one of them. I had and, uh, so I found the words in a 1921 yearbook over in the library because I figured most yearbooks print the alma mater and the class, you know, statement or whatever. And so I found the words. So I knew we, we were on the right track. Now I just had to find the song. Well, after a great deal of time went by, I found out that it was the uh, alma mater of Columbia University. And that tune has been used by many, many high schools and colleges throughout the country. Everybody knows that. And uh, so the first time that we, uh, a very, very good friend of, uh, of mine, uh, I know, I'm getting there. <laughs> There's a method to my madness. A uh, very good friend of mine arranged the Amara. And uh, Doug Henderson, he has since passed, but he was one of the assistant band directors. And he arranged the alma mater for us. And the first time we did it, it uh, we did it on our choir concerts. And Miss Vignatas, one of the assistant principals, came and said, how come we're not doing this everywhere? I said, well, we, we're going to. Um, so the first time we did it in an assembly, unfortunately, that was when the movie Dirty Dancing came out. And that is at the end of that movie. So all over the auditorium, the first time we sang it for the student body, we said, Dirty Dancing. And they just started laughing and giggling. So we didn't do it again for a while until that kind of passed away. And then we started performing and had all of the functions. And so the story they tell every year in graduation is true. That was a quest of mine to find it. Now, before we did the alma mater for several years, we had another song that we did. <laughs> it's from Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, music, P.A. Yazen. And I always chose two seniors that, that was kind of a special deal at the end of the year to sing the duet part to the PAAC. And uh, Richard Rankin, one year, was one of the ones that performed. And Gretchen Bassworth sang with him, but she at the last minute could not be here. Uh, so and Angela Tackett, who has sung with Richard before, uh, stepped in and is, they're going to sing the duet part to the PA Days. And this is how we used to close all of our concerts.
Richard Reinken, Angela Tackett. That's Ed Tackett's daughter-in-law, by the way. And they're both on the committee that helped put this together. So, we're down to the end of it. That's quite a lot of music to learn in one night. And some of them did learn it in one night, because not all of these numbers were done, you know, for 23 years. So some of them were familiar to some of the kids and some were not. So I'm very proud of them. Let's give them a big hand. And this is the first time I have been on this stage since I retired. Um, it's just real hard to go back. But this was such a special event. And it's probably the first time some of them have sung on this stage since they graduated. I remember the very last day, after I checked out, the last thing I did is I turned on the lights and I walked out and stood in the middle of the stage and just stood there. And in my mind, I heard the breaks on the curtains. I smelled the musty curtains. I remember what it was like when you could see the dust fall down from the lights. Because I've been on the stage ever since the fifth grade. And, uh, even though I've been on some stages since then, this was probably not, I would not be on the stage anymore because I started playing in the orchestra when I was in fifth grade. And so from there all the way through my whole life, I've been somewhere on a stage. So I am very pleased to pass the baton on to a young man who has followed in my footsteps. I believe this is his ninth year here. And it's so exciting for me to know that one of my own boys, is now the director, former director at Union High School. So I'm going to have Scott Zentafer come and direct the alma mater.
Miss Terry Graves, who played for me for years and years and years, accompanying our musicals and fortune in my companies, went with me to Washington and Boston, Terry Graves. Thank you. 